Okay, let's take a look at the different dashboards and analytics available to us in Zscaler Private Access. So in the dashboard view, I can select a different time frame um, up to 14 days. We store up to 14 days of logs uh, for Zscaler Private Access before they're expunged from the administration interface. And of course, the logs can be streamed through the log streaming service to your SIM to analyze for longer periods of time. Um, so within the dashboard, we can see um, number of recent applications accessed, discovered applications, uh, policy blocks uh, for that time period, and the successful transaction. So some high level view of allows blocks and uh, discovered applications. We can see the most recent applications. Um, we can of course download this as a CSV file, and we can see the top applications by bandwidth for that time period. Um, top policy blocks, the reasons for those policy blocks. Uh, I've had a high proportion of uh, no policy configured to allow access. And I can also see the discovered applications and top applications by users. Um, so my errors are an interesting place to start because generally this is where I'm going to figure out, you know, was there an error why a user couldn't connect? So I can see connection status, clo uh, status codes. So I can see connection status codes. Um, so in this case, there was no app connector available either during a restart or because I was deploying the app connector in that time period. Uh, Microtunnel setup uh, cannot promote. So there was no ability to find um, the app connector uh, and connect the app connector to the service edge. This was probably during my private service edge deployment. And then the app connector uh, DNS resolution problems. Uh, so possibly my DNS server was restarting or whatever. So you can look into these. And if I look at these error codes in the logs, I can link through to the help portal, which will explain what these logs mean. I can look at application errors. In this case, there was an application error for, for this server, uh, probably down to these uh, status codes, um, different reasons why applications couldn't connect. And again, if you see a high proportion of uh, status codes or application errors, it's a good place to start investigating um, why user activity is, is causing those problems. I can look at my app connector health. Uh, again, an error, no app connector could reach this application. And you can see that I can drill down um, the different applications here. And if I look at my service edges, um, again, the public service edges and the private service edges, why there were errors connecting to those. So let's take a look at this app connector. No app connector can reach this application. We can then drill down by, um, by applications. And we can see a um, number of different app connect applications were requested, uh, but no app connector could, could find them. And then we could um, look at those status codes. Uh, app connector not available, and then that uh, cannot promote. So there's two reasons why uh, users at a point in time couldn't connect to the CSX server. And if we look at those logs, we drill down into the raw data. Um, and actually, if you look at this, there's a period of time, um, October 28th, uh, 1546. And we can scroll down all this. We can see we've got this uh, scroll time here. There are an awful lot of transactions. This is actually uh, the ESX server constantly polling. Um, wasn't able to connect, wasn't able to connect. And we drilled all the way down um, to 484. And it shows how applications behave in that between 15, uh, 45 and 57 seconds and the start of those logs, which was uh, 1546, there were actually 848 transactions which just couldn't be processed. So the, the, the web um, browser was constantly trying to refresh and, and, and connect to the server and there was uh, no app connector available because we were restarting or something that was causing that problem. And of course, a couple of different ways to look at the solution to that problem. The first one is having multiple app connectors. The second one was, was the server actually available? Um, and the third one might be an internet connectivity problem from that data center and having multiple paths. So a number of different ways to look at a problem, look at an error, drill down into that error, 
um, and then understand the root cause of that error and implement a fix for that. Um, let's take a look at the dashboard. Um, we can look at um, user information. We can see the number of uh, recent users. There's only one user over the last hour. So we've got the last 14 days. Um, we can see that uh, it increases to two. I've got my log streaming server. That's classed as a client with policy associated with it. Um, my IP anchoring for traffic coming from ZIA and passing through Zscaler private access. Um, and I can see the users blocked by policy, um, whether they are a machine tunnel user or a, an actual user. Uh, these machine tunnels are pre-logon. Um, and I can see users by applications. Mark Ryan is, is clearly the, the most prolific user here. Uh, and he's downloaded uh, or he's transacted over a, a gig of traffic. Um, again, we can also then uh, click onto these and, uh, and drill down into that transaction information. It'll show me that user activity data. If we come to the health dashboard, it tells me about the health of applications or applications that have health enabled. For example, here's my Apache server. I can click on the health and it'll show me the path, the dynamic server that was uh, discovered. That's the IP address it's listening on and how that connects through to the FQDN and that path. If I had multiple app connectors, multiple DNS entries for that server, multiple physical servers, I'd see a more uh, generic tree in here showing the, the path and where things might be uh, up, down or unhealthy. I can see the information about the app connectors and I can see the information about my service edges. If I come across to the app connector tab, it gives me more information about these, these app connectors. So again, click on these tabs. It'll take me into the, the user information for those transactions. But what I'm really interested in on this screen is um, how traffic is passing through these app connectors. So if I look again at these 14 days, I can trend the traffic and I can see that um, you know I had a peak of 25 tunnels. That's incredibly low. If you start to see kind of 60,000, 100,000 um, application tunnels coming through. You might want to drill down a bit more and understand information about the port utilization, the CPU um, information, and maybe uh, let's take a look at these. We'll have the file descriptor utilization um, and the tunnel creation rate. So we can look at this. You know, we had um, applications were available, um, tunnel creation rate per second is incredibly low. Um, CPU utilization, I had a spike here. This is probably during either provisioning um, or, uh, or an upgrade. Uh, I can see the file descriptors because it's a Linux system. The file descriptors are an indicator of um, transaction rate or, or utilization. And I can see the memory utilization because it's a pretty low spec virtual machine. It's pretty low. Um, uh, it's using 70% here. So all of this information gives me the ability to trend this over time. And of course, I can stream this to my log server for even greater time periods to understand how app connectors are being used. I can look at the private service edge in exactly the same way. Um, from an inspection perspective, again, if I have inspection enabled for my uh, HTTP and HTTPS applications, I can see the information here. Um, in this case, um, you know, 1,134 transactions, 14% of which were security violations. And I can go ahead and drill down on these transactions if I want. So let's take a look at these logs. And again, it now takes me across to the web inspection portal um, and tells me about those transactions. I can drill into those policy violations and understand why transactions were blocked at that point. The place we're probably going to spend most of our time um, is looking at the user activity information, understanding uh, transactions and their path, service edges involved, and if there were errors, um, diagnosing those errors. We can trend information over time, and we can add filters to this in the same way that we can add filter to the user activity logs to filter by application domain. We start typing. Got one application here called Apache, which I use for everything. And we can see how those transaction rates 
were trending over time. So a great diagnosis of um, application traffic flows, user traffic flows, and then also you know, the path, tra path of those transactions help us understand utilization. Could we do something better to, um, to f find a shorter path or a better path for those transactions? Or if a path isn't selected, understanding why is there a firewall blocking the transaction is there an acl on the network or is the application just not available so great diagnostics information um, that you wouldn't necessarily have unless you are doing a zero trust network imp implementation um, so we look at the logs let's um, take a look at these different filters so we can filter on almost every um, attribute of a log um, the IP address, was it a client-to-client -client transaction, the port of those app connectors, the application um, FQDN uh, was double encryption enabled, the duration of it, the protocol, was it TCP or UDP, um, the application segment name, um, we can filter based on the server IP address, so if you have applications um, with multiple FQDNs resolving to the same IP address, we can filter on that. We can take connection ID information if we want to correlate with logs that we might see client side. Or we can have a look at um, the uh, forwarding service edge, if it was a public or private service edge. Um, here I'm using my private service edge. Um, we can look at things like um, which IDP and which policy was uh, being applied, um, information on the transaction rate, the client type, and then the individual user accessing those uh, those transactions. A great deal of granularity for those analytics uh, help us diagnose problems, help us understand user traffic, and if we want to do forensic analysis of who accessed this application at this point in time, we can do that. Um, other information that's of interest. Um, you might want to correlate logs perhaps with um, some other SIM uh, information, your logs on your web server. So this gives you information as the traffic egressed the, um, the app connector. What was the TCP source port for that transaction? Um, what was the destination IP address for the transaction? So you still have all of this information. You have the client side information to be able to understand the client IP address. We can now see the IP address and the source port as it egress the app connector, and, and therefore that would be the source port that the application would see, and therefore you can correlate um, that data elsewhere. We can then um, view all of that information as a raw log, and all of these attributes can be streamed to your log streaming server, um, and we can download this transaction information if we wanted to then use this to, um, to submit a support ticket to Zscaler um, support.